Uh, we thought we were so smart back then. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Yes. Uh, good, morning. good morning. Good to see everybody here today. Bill's gone with his uh, with his boy to the University of Virginia. I think it's where he's talking taken. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so they're gone. And uh, Dave's not going to be here. He's still, he's still got lingering effects of uh, the cold or whatever he had last week. So he uh, asked not to be on this morning, which is fine. And Lynn McCurdy, if you're here, I know Jerry said something about you wanted to be on. Um, yeah, he's, he's scheduled for next Saturday if things go well. It's, is it next Saturday? Saturday? Okay. And, and, unless there was somebody that we had pre-scheduled. No, it would have been Dave. It would have been the only one I'd have had on, but he's pretty flexible too. So, uh, okay. So, Lynn, we will – I need I need you to either send me a text or uh, or Jerry can send you the link in on Saturday morning. Can you do that, Jerry? Just send him the same link I send you to yes. Lynn. The only way that I have to get a hold of Lynn is through Facebook. Oh, okay. Well, Lynn. Cla Cla Claude is, is, his mind is degenerating with age. He thinks that you're the one that contacted Lynn and kind of set this up, and it's actually me. Oh, was it? <laughs> was it? Was it me? Yeah. So, yes, I didn't see I, it until last, and, see it till late last night. We have emailed each other, you know, several different times, so I can get the link to him. Okay. Or we can give, give that or just address. Yeah. Or just send me a, send me a, uh, an email on the uh, back on track page and I'll send it to you that next, uh, next Saturday morning. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get you on here one way or the other. Uh, anyway, so we have nothing to talk about this morning. <laughs> Not a, this is the same old, same old, right? Do we ever? Uh, and we still get people to we, show. We did them. last week. Well, Jerry came in loaded for bear, and we yeah. with a, he had good, yeah, a, a he had pretty good, good pretty good. Uh, I guess you call it philosophical uh, show well, last week. Well, Jerry's the intelligent one of the group. Yeah, he's the quiet, smart guy. Yeah, I don't know about you know. that. Not me. <laughs> what does that what does that make him a gamma male? Is that how that works? I don't, don't ask me. I don't know what his pronouns are. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve, why don't you tell us who's here? Uh, oh, man. Good, good grief. Man, we got, well, let's see. We got Dwight Curley. Good morning, Sparky. Good morning, Sparky. Stephen Wigwag. Floyd Robbins. Steve Childers. Hello. Oh, we got the Iron More Horse Mod. We got to get you on the show, man. Here we have Lynn McCurdy, Rob T Man, Jack Jack. Andy, the hot dog pilot, Container Man 68, Roy Hardwick, good morning. Uh, let's see, we, we got, oh, Gail's in here, good morning, Gail, Jack, Jack, Steve Childers, Chris Brew, hey, how are you doing, how are you doing, Gerald Stewart, we got Allie in here, uh, JD, Grandpa Rails, good morning, Mark Pruitt, Dave DES Multimedia, my buddy Bernard, good morning, Bernard, Ray Bertelson, uh let's see john knoffel knoffel I, I i apologize i butcher your name i'm not sure exactly how that works uh john k john k okay anyway i think that's everybody did you get floyd oh, robbins i think i did i think i got okay. you well, I'm not listening to you. I'm trying to read <laughs> while you're listening. talking. <laughs> that, I'm, that's nothing new. Uh, <laughs> well, good morning, morning, everybody. Glad you're here. Um, we already got 31 in here. We're just getting started. 31. Oh, yeah. It's been such a good community. Um, oh, yeah, Michael Carvel's here. Yeah. Yeah, we get the regulars every week, man. You guys are. Yeah, we got some good. We got a good group. Good group. Um, yeah, Sparky said we never have anything to talk about. That's true, Sparky. So while you're on the phone, we're going to talk about you. How about that? There you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, I pop in and and he he was live streaming last night. They had uh, six 
six or seven people in the stream at one time. Wow. Is this Heath? <clears throat> he, oh, huh? you say Heath? No. Uh, it, was, it was Sparky. Sparky, oh, okay. Yeah, they're, they're talking about, I guess there's going to be a meet and greet. I'm not sure where. I come in late to the stream. And, of course, I'm relatively sure it's so far east of me, it would just be unfeasible for me yeah. to... Uh, Reading, uh, PA. Yes. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. Pretty far it's just not feasible for me. I'd love little, to do that. A little bit of a drive. <laughs> so, uh, I'll start. No. What? Timonium is uh, April 27th, 28th. Wilmer's going to be there. Flying Crow Roberts going to be there. I'm sure like the locals, Joe Raider and uh, Ray Babel and I don't know who else locally. Probably Anthony, George Sunbelt. Uh, just guessing now. Um, so we're all going to hang out at the train show then. Yeah. We need to do something like that in uh, Oklahoma, Texas. Yeah, you guys should yeah, yeah, those kind of guys, area do something. Yeah. Uh, you have a lot of guys sure. like, you know, uh, Robert's there. Uh, Jason's probably not far from Robert. J Jason would be in reasonable driving distance. Yeah. Uh, John would be now. JD. John Dilly. Yeah, you got John Dilly. Jack Jack is over there somewhere, right, Jack? Yeah, there, there's a lot of people I really Deep don't builders. know personally where they, where they land at. Yeah, there's a lot of guys in Texas I know, um, and a, a few. Of guys. I think a few are Kansas. There's guys yeah. there that really don't even come on to this show that would probably come. Yeah, the the trick is finding uh, an event to actually have it around. There's not, yeah. you know, there's not a lot. There's the the frame festival today, I guess, and I didn't even know what was going on. So that shows you how much information they put out. You have to look for it. <clears throat> I'm sure there's something in Dallas that, you know, that wouldn't be too bad. That's like six hours for me. Yeah. Um, that wouldn't be too bad. They have some train shows down there. I've never been to one in, in the Dallas Fort Worth area or even in Texas for that matter. Um, yeah, I'm sure that might be a possibility. Something out. Yeah. We we'll have to look into that. See if we can get, get a, a Southwest, Midwest kind of, well, not Midwest because Midwest implies too far east <laughs> maybe i've never but, understood that why the the midwest is actually east of the well, west because <laughs> up with it, it was the midwest i suppose we'd have been the far west at that time yeah. <laughs> maybe y'all could meet at steve's childers or dennis's and have a work session oh that'd be cool <laughs> <laughs> Boy, people would be driving way out of their way to come have a work session. They'd be driving place. out there going, where in the hell are we? Yeah. <laughs> Why am I here? Uh, you, you could you could get a hotel room 25 miles away and it wouldn't be too bad. That's so, that's what I did. You know. <laughs> uh, but I got fed well. I have, to, I have to say that Gail would feed you. So that might bring them in. Yeah. And it was very good food, too. <laughs> But yeah, we, we have to look into doing that sometime. Um, yeah, I see Mike McCarville there up and in, in, he's up in Denver. Um, and I, I know there's some others up there. But I'd love to get Mike and, and Dave uh, Vollmer to come down when you get yours a little further along and meet at your place, Dennis. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. As, uh, I mean, as my my only is is there's there would be what would I call it? Uh, I would be extremely nervous, you know, <laughs> and, and having someone, you know, even if they're if that would be different if they were willing and eager and they reached out to me and said, "Hey, I would really like to," you know, that that would be one thing. But you know, there's just a lot of expectations involved in having someone come to your layout, especially yeah. if they've you know, like with Dave, Dave's. I got a, a really nice layout. And <clears throat> yeah, but having, having talked to Dave and Mike both, I, they're both very personable people. Dave, so too. I, Dave Todd? Dave I Todd? Think ever, yeah, no, um, Dave Vollmer. Uh, we had know. him on the show before. He does narrow gauge also. But uh, Oh, yeah? What's his channel? 
Um, just Dave Bomer. Dave Bomer. He might have changed it a little bit. It might be like the the San Juan uh, second division, or I, I, bet. I forget. He's changed it a little bit, but I think Dave Vollmer is still in the title. I can't remember. Um, Mike can probably answer this for us. Um, what's his, what's his channel? Uh, Mike, I was just over there not too long ago, but I don't remember what it was. I probably found him on my sub list and just got on there. <laughs> Dave expects red carpet and champagne. <laughs> he does too. <laughs> uh, well, we can model, uh, you know how to drink model railroading with Dave Volmer. <laughs> the link right here. Railroading with Dave. Okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Um, he he's found it. Yeah. Right oh, he's hard to I just subscribed to him, and it's pretty cool. You know, Dennis, I, I think I, I, I don't think you should place any type of expectation on, like, you know, what you were saying. I forget what you said um, about having people over. I mean, it's, it's just people hanging out with you. I mean, they're it not gives there. Them to, anxiety. They're, well, yeah, I mean, look, they're not there to touch your railroad or anything. I if, mean, if you live 20 minutes away, big deal, come over. Yeah. But no. but if you're gonna have to if you're gonna have to drive three, four, <laughs> six, eight, nine hours to come yeah. look at my railroad, to yeah. me that makes it a little more I don't know what the word is, you know, like I would feel more like I need to impress you because you have put a lot of energy and effort into coming to look at my stuff. The, mm -hmm. you know so that that's my only thing if if it was just a matter of driving across town or even you know up to an hour or two oh, I wouldn't Dennis. have any reservations whatsoever trust me if they make any kind of plans to drive that far to the outback of Oklahoma you yes. don't have to impress them no. <laughs> they're coming because they want to I guess yeah. that I guess you could look at it that way I mean I still, are you I nervous still feel obligated there would be an obligation that would be hard for me to <laughs> not feel. Well, were you nervous when I came out there? Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know yeah. why. <laughs> well, I mean, because just because you, you drove four hours, that's, that's a, that's because I wanted to, huh? Because I wanted to. Well, I know. I, wanted to see, I basically wanted to see the room you were in. Yeah, because it's always hard to tell on camera. Yeah, yes. and I wanted to try and help you with the problem you were having with the spline uh, overlaps on that one corner. Um, but you talk about nervous is when I was running your time saver. Yeah, why was that nervous? was nervous? <laughs> why? <laughs> there again, out, why were you Claude? nervous? <laughs> when you came out here, Claude, I was nervous. It's like, oh uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, no, the it came out because it came out there because I wanted to. I know, but still, that's a long. I mean, that's a long commitment just to come out and see. You know, oh, well, see. we we saw a lot of stuff on that trip. Trust me, yeah. <laughs> and five thousand five hundred miles worth of driving, you'll see a lot Woo! of stuff. So, John, yeah, yeah, was, that was a great first, trip. The first time John twenty six eighteen came to meet me at my shop. <laughs> I was, just, I think, it was uh, just like hanging out. I mean, I mean, yeah. granted, I mean, yeah. he was on a business trip up in my area, but you know, yeah. it's like you know, it was. I, just I think I think he said it would be twenty three hours and forty five minutes to come visit me. <laughs> Who? Well, I, I, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah had, be away for Heath. We ought to do a Pacific Northwest meet and greet, but I don't know how many people we get on the Pacific North. I mean. You got uh, Bernard and Steve Anderson and me, you know, within, a, I don't know who else you'd get out of. We, we, we know, could meet at Train Mountain. Train Mountain would be a perfect meet and greet place. And we had the mini meet and greet when I came out there. That was, we had a blast. Yeah, you yeah. don't forget Chuck. CDK. I'd like to spend more time there, you know, no, have, yeah, more than just Chuck. one yeah. day. Yeah. How could I forget Chuck? Hey, uh, uh, John Schuylkill River, what's up? But yeah, that was that was a lot of fun, and it would be yeah. worth the trip for anybody that wanted to make it out there. Oh yeah, yeah. Train Mountain is a phenomenal yeah. place. That would be enjoyable. 
Yeah. And there's, there's, there's a, there's a uh, three-story motel at the casino five minutes away from it, so there's plenty of rooms. Yeah. Yeah, as long as it's not during one of their events, like the triannual. No, you don't want to go there during a meet. Yeah, it'd be too crowded. Other time. Yeah. What's the best time to visit out there, Steve? Any any time. That's not an answer. Sure it is. No, any time yeah, when the weather like, starts. Who who wants to come out there in January when it's cold as no, out there? Once the weather starts warming up, yeah. I mean, anything you know, around here, April, you know, May, April, May, June, July. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna send that to your wife, uh, Mike. Casino <laughs> dancers. <laughs> uh, no, even if it's hot out there, it would be it would not be that bad. Uh, no, a no, lot of trees. I mean, it's it's a beautiful place. Yeah, it really it, is. I mean, if you've got an RV, they've got you know play, hookups and stuff for RVs. If you tent camp, you can camp there. Or, you know, bring your pickup and a camper shell or whatever. And there's always somebody there running a train. I mean, yeah. all. Maybe yeah, uh, it's, it's just a crazy place. Maybe yeah. 2025, we can have a meet and greet there. Uh, as long as you don't do it in June, because that's when they have the triannual. Well, I'm just saying. Yeah, but you yeah. couldn't have a meet and greet at the triannual? No, uh, you would. No. Yeah. Yeah, there's too many people there. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you say too many people, what's don't what do you think that is? Just out of curiosity, hundreds of people, <laughs> hundreds people from all over the world. Yeah, they they fly out there. I mean, every track is full of trains. There, there's people in Australia, England. People you know, ship their trains. They they plan ahead of time, and they'll months ahead of time they'll ship their stuff over here. They're probably wow. thinking about God knows how much they, Yeah, and then they and they come out and they spend a week or two or whatever, and then they go home. But uh, oh, it's nuts! Yeah, just look. I mean, go to YouTube and just put in any you know, Trey Mountain Triennial, and you'll find all kinds of videos I mean, of it. Just but, think of that, right? Like if you're coming from any other country, shipping your trains, you got some serious money. Mm -hmm. to ship and, your stuff and, and to go to there, fly and stay. Yeah. Well, yeah. usually not those guys, they, they come there to the triennial, then they then they put them on a trailer and they drive to other uh, yeah. places that have outdoor track and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, they, don't, they don't just do that one event. Right. Yeah. They'll, they'll go to different ones. So sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they definitely make a commitment, and I, I'm I'm pretty blessed. I'm only two hours away from it, you know. But uh, yeah. yeah, that'd be a great place for me. Yeah, it'd be it'd be a little far for for some people, but I mean, it's on the west coast, so it's not it's not close for a lot of people. But uh, it is a it'd be a fantastic place to have a meet and greet. Mm -hmm. Really would. Yeah, because <clears throat> you can't get the you can't get the feel for the place until you've been there. It was, you know, and I'd seen video on it and the show we did on here with Steve and uh, Chuck, and uh, you still can't get the feel for it until you get there. Yeah, you, and I, and I you know turn in a circle, and as far as you can see, there's track everywhere. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. it's crazy. It's 2,200 acres and 35 miles of track. I mean, you, you know. Yeah. First time I went there, I, I rode all weekend, and I never saw the same track twice. So, 35 I mean, actual miles. Yeah, 35 wow. main miles. That yeah. doesn't count. That doesn't count sightings, yards, you know, storage. Track, track to some of the people's houses that live around there. Yeah. They drive their train to and from their house. Yeah. Fair, but, but I mean, if I, I can put the word out and I guarantee I, I know of four people right now that would go that they bring their steam engines up there. How you know, fast so. do they go? How so fast you can, do you want? they no, go off? I mean, the like, I mean, like, do they go like five miles an hour, two miles an hour, <laughs> ten? Well, yard speed is three, and it, theoretically, main line is I think it's seven. It is the top speed, but there are people fly around there. Really? I mean, 
hell, I was flying around there on <laughs> mine, man. I, I so was I'm probably thinking, there. man, 35 miles a track. That would take a long time to traverse oh, sure. five miles an hour. Well, what no. you say? It's it's four hours to the top of the mountain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're yeah, you're gonna be gone all day. So if you're gonna go up to Hope Circle, you better pack a lot of water, you know, food, because you it it's gonna be at least a four hour round trip. Yeah, they got porta potties up there along the way. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, wow. yeah. But take care of your hemorrhoids before you go. Yeah. Yeah. How many passing sightings do they have between? Gee. Much, plenty. They're all yeah. over. Everywhere. Well, it's a one. It's one way. Almost yeah. all the track is one way, so you don't yeah. have a lot of head-on. There, there's head -on actually speeds. there's oh, only okay. One. So, in, in effect, it's essentially a big loop, mm -hmm. and all traffic travels counterclockwise or whatever. Is that? Yeah, it's it's okay. hard to get lost because it's all directional. No matter which way you go right, left it's always going to end you back down the mountain there's uh, on the lower side there's one section that's bi-directional and it's all signaled so you, nobody ever cool. is going to cra crash he's, and he gonna, wants to know who owns it that's a long story nobody owns it um there was a guy years ago in a nutshell there, there's a property that the guy built a inch and a half scale railroad, and oh, what's his name? I, I can't remember. But anyway, he he had a lot of money. He was a lawyer. He wanted to build another railroad, so he bought the property next to it, and started the railroad. Probably twenty or thirty years ago, it's been around for a while, but it got in some legal issues where there were liens on the property and it was in foreclosure and going to be shut down and, and sold and i mean they had all the buildings all the track the roundhouse everything <clears throat> so a group of and chris chris you're you're in you're in in chat you could probably tell the story better than i can but it's my understanding that a group of attorneys that are also inch and a half scale hobbyists got together and put the property in some sort of a legal deal where it's up for sale. It's, and the agreement is that if it's ever sold, the buyer has to maintain the track, maintain the landscape, the buildings. They have to keep it the way it is. And nobody's going to do that. So I think it's permanently up for sale forever. And now it's a, it's a museum, and now it's all gotten into whatever. So anyway, I, I was, it's kind of a club, club owned thing almost. Yes, right? yeah. So now I mean, do you guys maintain it and all that stuff, and pay the dues yeah. to keep it up and everything. So yeah, Steve, but, could you go up there and, and build a marriage. house? Huh? Could you go up there and build a house? Uh, there's guys who got houses on the property. I, I suppose. I know, but like, could you just go up there and start building a house? No, you have to buy the land. Like, what? I, uh, yeah. I mean, no, you can't. Somebody technically owns it. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not improved to the point where they could build a track of homes. No. Uh, you'd have to figure out where your water's coming from. All your utilities. Yeah. You'd have to have all that in place before you could even think about building a home. Uh, well, and then, and then you still got the municipalities to deal with or the state or whatever, to, that whoever's going to be over that, building a house there. Yeah. And they hauled in a bunch of cabooses. That, <clears throat> they're all over the property. There's actually a place called Caboose Ridge up on the top of the mountain. <clears throat> it's got, I don't know, eight or ten cabooses up there. And their idea was... They were going to fix up the cabooses as cabins and where you could go. And, what, I, I missed that. What, it, what do you say? <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. I shouldn't have put that up while you were talking. Mike what? McCarble said, when does the back on track swimsuit counter go on sale? He needs three of them. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, dude. 
your life is so bad. <laughs> you got to have three calendars left. <laughs> uh, uh, but no, they were gonna they were gonna make it so tracks go up to all these cabooses, and you uh, can go up and take your train and and stay at the cabin. But all the legal crap found out that everything had to be wheelchair accessible. And they were going to make this. So the only way you get up there was with your train. So they scrapped that idea. And now they just got cabooses all over the place. That's, I, I hate hearing stuff like that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I really do. Because that, that's a but, wonderful idea. Yeah, it really is. But that, that didn't happen. But no, it's I mean, you, I, I think the membership's like a, it's right around 100 bucks, maybe plus or minus. And you you got yeah, and you're a member. You go up there and you can do whatever you want. I mean, they've got a whole. Yeah, batch that's of crazy. Like, my local HO club is three hundred bucks a year. I can go there for a hundred bucks. Well, and they've got yeah. a. I mean, Claude, you've seen at their back shop. You could build a train if you want. Oh yeah, they've got every tool you can think of. Machining tool you can think of is in that shop. And you can I mean, go. You, uh, the only thing you got to do is clean up after yourself. So, I mean, you got free run of the place. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and I've and been in, you know, if you go to Durango and you go to the Brown House there, they do, what, 80% of the steam repairs on steam engines in the whole country are done there. Um, and machine stuff, machine and stuff in that roundhouse. And it's not very big, but they've got all the tools that you can think of that they've got. And... Train Mountain's shop is like a miniature one of those. Oh yeah, it's it's crazy. Well, and they've got and there's a bar in there. I mean, yeah. on, on the work on the work weekends and when I, I and I haven't seen it, but I understand that they they've got a whistle they'll blow when everybody comes in and they they're you know three dollar beers or whatever in the you know dollar beer. Or, <coughs> so yeah, I mean it's. It's a crazy place, man. It's it's insane. So how but come you when, do you move, when you moved to where you are, were you into these trains then? No, I didn't even know about it. I never oh, so. like if if so, you would have probably moved closer. No, I got yeah. I'm married, so no. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was your I best. mean, yeah, I mean I I had no idea this place even existed. Yeah, and uh, uh, and when I went up, I heard about it, but it's kind of like Disneyland, you know, and you don't really experience it until you're actually there and see how so big. You, so you went there, right? Saw it, and then you said, "I need one," and you you bought your Santa well, Fe. Picture? It, no, everybody needs one, but <laughs> <laughs> everybody needs one, but. <laughs> But actually getting one, that's that's a different story. It's a very expensive hobby to get into. I mean, it ain't cheap. Yeah. It all comes down to to dollars. I mean, a lot of people get in the hobby very simply. They'll they'll build a, a small, you know, gasoline pack, you know, with four wheels or whatever. And even those are expensive. Yeah. Uh, I I the only reason I got into it was uh, I hooked my my wife's best friend. <clears throat> married to a, a machinist at Erickson Air Crane. And we got to be friends. And I'd known them for probably five or six years when we're playing cards one day. And he goes, oh, I, I, I know this guy that uh, uh, he, I work with him and he, he built a train, you know, <laughs> and I heard. And it turns out that that was John that it ended up with the locomotive that I got. So John and I became very good friends through, you know, through my wife's best friend's husband. And so that's, that's funny. And so, I mean, I never would have gotten into the hobby without John. And but so he wants to know, how did you negotiate with your wife to get your first large scale locomotive and vehicle to pull it from space to store it, et cetera? Um, this ought to be interesting. So well, long story, kind of where we were already going. Long story short is uh, forgiveness is easier to get than permission. <laughs> <laughs> write that down. 
Yeah, you get that tattooed on your on your chest. Yeah. So, so did you buy your Santa Fe switcher or did you make your Santa Fe switcher? The Santa Fe switch, okay. John had his his uh he had an Allen 10 wheeler um over at the Medford train park. And when I went over there, he had that switch engine. The only thing he used it for was to pull his steam engine out of the car barn and take it up to the steaming bay. And that's all he used it for. He never ran it for anything. Wow. And when he got cancer, it ended up, well, his, his uh, 10 wheeler was sold to a guy in Texas and John gave me the switcher. He said, you know what? Wow. Everything you've done for me, it, you can just have it. So he gave that to me. And you and John he, became good friends. Oh, yeah, we were great friends. I yeah. love John. That's and nice. he, But he had that American in his bedroom, went over to his house. He he was kind of a hermit. John yeah. was a great guy. He's, he was kind of... So he didn't have a wife? Oh, he wanted one. Well, he, he was married years ago, but um, John was... He was a woman. I don't think my wife would put up with a large train in our bedroom. I'm just thinking. I don't <laughs> think mine would either. No, but uh, it sat. It sat in his bedroom. It was covered, and all the pieces. The pieces for the for that was in his living room the whole time I knew him. You go over there, and they're spread out on the floor. And I bugged him the whole time I knew him. That's like, let's finish your American. I'll do the cabin, the tender. And he's like, nah, no. And after bugging him, I knew he was never going to finish it. So it's like, okay, fine. But when he passed away, his family was supposed to take that American. And his brother promised John that he was going to finish it. And I found it for sale on one of the local live steam pages discover live steam i saw it up for sale and i was pissed because oh. they had promised him that on his deathbed basically that that's going to stay in the family and he's gonna he's gonna finish it and they they put it up for sale and i was madder than hell so i ended up contacting the family saying hey i'll make you a deal don't sell it. Give me time to sell the switch engine and yeah. I'll buy that. Yeah. And Diane's going, nope, no, nope. first come, first serve. They wow. would not work with me wow. at all. That's so it's shame. like, so anyway, I, I, I saw, thought about it for a while and I threw the dice and I put that up for sale, hoping that it would sell before they sold that American. And it just turns out within probably a week i had it for uh for sale a guy up in uh skycomish yeah um, they've got a, a public track up there they bought it and i i i bought the american and so that's the only reason i got into the hobby i never would have been able to get into this from john it, what's john do he's well he's he, he was a law he was a logger i mean the guy's like five three and 110 pounds the guy's a little guy but yeah he he logged redwoods over in the pacific northwest and before that he was a biker i mean so border, he was a lot healthy i mean i, I can't see he's really? two man chew long hair you know 500 pound harley and 110 pound john uh, <laughs> he had he had more <laughs> stories that he then you could shake a stick at and then he he uh, taught machining over at uh, the community college in uh, it's a little town south of uh, Eureka on the coast, and that's where he met Russ. He Russ was a student of John's in machining, and they became really good friends. And uh, Russ was a machinist at Erickson Air Crane over here make those big old helicopters you know for heavy lifting that look like a big dragonfly oh, yeah. and they and they got he got john hired on over at erickson as machining so how old was john when he passed away i think he was 68 69 kind of young well he had cancer yeah pretty, pretty bad but yeah 
Yeah. It does. Uh, Mike, Mike McCarl says, had, had, had the Denver show had a bunch of large scale steam and diesel in it. It's tempting to get into that. And I told Steve that very thing when I went up there and I saw that great big narrow gauge engine they had sitting next to his little old American. That's what I'd want to have. And that's way too much money. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, it's, you know, cause those scale on those is a much bigger because it's a narrow gauge engine. So the engine itself is a lot larger than oh. a lot of the ones that run on there are. Well, my, <clears throat> well, it's mine's inch and a half scale. The, the, the gauge of the track is, is, um, seven and a half inches, but it's inch and a half to the foot. Yeah. But if you go narrow gauge, then you can go two and a half inches to the foot, three and a half inches to the foot, and they get really big. Yeah. Really, really big. But they look so cool riding on that little bitty rail. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what, Claude? That, you know that big, uh, big engine that was next to mine up at Train Mountain? Yeah. I, I think that's, they call it a Sweet Creek, I think. Chris, you can chime in on that. Tim bought one. Oh, did so, he? Yeah, he got his dream engine. He he uh, he had that one that he bought, turned around and sold it and bought a, a Sweet Creek. I think it's three and a half inches to the foot. And he's going to finish that one within the next four or five years. I hope I live to see it. <laughs> Boomer a, from, uh, yeah, thanks. Hey, Boomer. Hey, Boomer's a, here. It, Talking it, Boomer. It, he restored mm -hmm. a live steam big boy for a museum once. It was a, built by a World War II pilot. Every part had to be labeled to fit back together correctly. Wow. Oh, I, don't, I can't even imagine trying to build one of those. And I like building stuff, but yeah. <laughs> that would make me crazy. <laughs> trying to build one of those. We need to have Boomer on the show. Hey, Shannon. What's up, buddy? Yeah, we have to get Boomer. Well, Boomer, we get you on the show sometime. Yeah, it'd be cool to have you on <clears throat> Dave Todd wants to know what are the rail? What do you use for rails? Don't they make them? They forge are them. You, are you talking about the inch and a half? Uh, probably, I guess you can buy it. It's yeah, it's it. aluminum. They're kind of like eight foot, eight foot joints, or I think they're ten foot lengths, um, aluminum and and steel. They're actually changing all the aluminum rail up a train mountain to steel because it lasts a lot longer. But it's a lot more expensive. I think, I think the uh, aluminum rails running about a buck and a half a foot, something like that. But I think, I think that the numbers it varies depending on who you talk to. But inch and a half scale track costs you about eight to ten bucks a foot to build, including rail, ties, yeah. ballast. Forget it. Switches, switches are a fortune, right? Switches, yeah. I mean, they're, they're commercially really? available. Yeah, but they're really expensive, though. Well, don't yeah. they make don't they make all their switches there? Yeah, I think yeah. they they, yeah, they, they make do. it all there in their shop. Yeah. Well, when I went there, they had sections. I don't know how long the sections were. Ten feet, maybe twelve feet. Yeah, whatever. Long, yeah. Looked like sectional track, just stacked up, ready to be put in place when they needed. Yeah. So, so they, d does does it operate on a volunteer basis or are there full-time employees there? there how, do, how does that part of it work? I know of one full-time uh, Joyce up there. She runs the office. I know she's an employee. I, there may be a, a handful, but I'm not really sure. The rest of it's all volunteers. People yeah. And I presume that there's some kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, entity so to speak a legal entity that that the money generates goes into and then that that money goes to buy the rail and, and upkeep yeah. on the property and all that yeah i mean it, it, the membership you know that that uh, helps a lot with that but the the biggest thing for train mountain is uh steiger butte at the top of it there it's the perfect place for cell towers and that's where they have them. And I think they get a lot of money from that. Uh, and that was up where the fire, fire was. So, you know, so like years if we visited, right. Is there like an entry fee to get in? No, 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 it's free. The public to come in. 
Now, if you want to run, if you want to bring a train and run it, there may be some kind of fee involved. Right. Um, no, vi no visitors can come. If you're a member of another club anywhere, then you're welcome to come there for free. Right. For free. Yeah. Or can you can you bring somebody up there to run their train? Yeah, as long as they've got a guest. A, yeah, as long as they're a member of a club, and most anybody that's got a one of these trains is, is a member somewhere of a club. Yeah. So yeah, you're automatically welcome. Yeah, that's amazing. That like, how many members are there? Do you know? I have no idea. I know there's a lot, but you gotta. It's like any any. They've got there's a core group there. Right. That yeah. live pretty close and they're always there working. You know, it's the old 80 20 world. You know, 20% of the people do 80% of the work. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's how it is everywhere. It's not, yeah. you know, he he yeah. says, What if no one would have me as a member of anything? That's a risk. I, I don't think that's a risk. I think that's a reality. <laughs> 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 yeah, that, yeah, that, I, I don't think they turn you down if you're willing to pay the dues. I, I would like hire you thank you. for no other reason than, or having the part of my club for no other reason to make sure that I get some quality shelving uh, yeah. placed where it needs to be on my model railroad. Yeah. <laughs> He's a shelving expert. <laughs> I'm not watching time. If you don't know what we're talking <laughs> about, then you'd, you'd have to go watch when last week's live stream, I think it was this uh, sidetrack Sunday. I can't remember what his, wasn't this last Sunday? I think it was a Sunday before. I can't remember, but it was it was an epic live stream. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Chris answered the question. If he recalls correctly, three employees, one in the office, that's Joyce, and two that maintain equipment. So I mean, you know, yeah. the rest are volunteers. Yeah, yeah, and they bust their butts up there. Yeah, they do. They are up there Not all the time. Either laying track, replacing track, and reballasting, um, constantly pine, pine needles and and pine cones. They've got, they've got a they've got yeah. a train that goes goes along and blows the pine needles off. I mean, it's very efficient up there. Yeah, they, they've got it down to a science. I mean, there's a lot of railroad up there to maintain. Yeah, there's a lot of railroad. You got to. Uh... Patrol that railroad to make sure trees aren't down. And mm -hmm. Well, yeah. and that, that train he's talking about that blows the pine needles off, pine cones too. There's pine cones and pine needles everywhere there. And they're big pine cones. Yeah. Be yeah. <laughs> they're big. And then once you get them off the main line, you got to go pick them up. So there's people that go out there and they're raking up. They've got a pine needle train. So you can take the train up and load these giant hopper cars with pine needles, take them down to the burn pit and dump them. You know? <laughs> so there's always something to do. I mean, if somebody lives close, man, you could spend your life, your life up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Which I, I would do. Having, having gotten older and, and knowing how hard physical work is anymore on my body, you know, it's but now I have the time, would have the time to go do that and volunteer but wouldn't have the physical ability well, to do so and the track work is that it, it seriously it's a lot of work oh yeah i've watched them do it yeah it's... i've i've done it a couple of times up there to help and getting older it's you know but no i did that down in sacramento when i i belonged to the sacramento live steamers for almost three years and i laid a lot of track down there and that that's a lot of work yeah i mean because <laughs> Even though they've got it all pre-made up and everything, and they've got the, yeah. the train to bring the ballast out, it's still, still a lot of handwork. It's got to be they can, Tell you, you know. what, they play railroad up there really fast because they've got they've got the the equipment. They they let you know they get the roadbed through and they lay down a weed a weed barrier cloth, dump ballast. They've got ballast trains up there. They dump the ballast. They go lay the track panels bolt them together, dump ballast, level yeah. it, boom, you got a railroad. That's an interesting question. The member wants to know if the boilers on the model locomotives have to be certified. Yes. Well, they've got to be, yeah, to, to go. 
run on the track. Yes, yeah, they do. And who, get, who certifies them? There are special people there that are qualified in boilers that know what they're talking about, and they they have to be hydrostatically tested, and which is ba pretty much fill the boiler up with water, plug everything, and pump the pressure up to way over what the the safeties would be. So there's no way these boilers are going to blow up. I mean, the worst thing you, they're going to do is, you know, ruin itself by running it out of water, but it's not going to blow up. Um, but you're, you're looking for leaks. So, so we, yeah, it's nothing like a full size team engine. Yeah. So, I mean, if, when you've got a sealed, the sealed boiler and all the system, pumped up to twice the pressure of what the boiler is, you're going to find leaks. You're going to see water coming out and they'll, they'll go around and they, they'll test it, make sure. And, and they're, you're hydrostatically set and they want to make sure your safety's pop. And, but so yeah, at train map, you'll get a certificate for an annual certificate. That, that is my last question about this. Was the Santa Fe switcher, one of John's first builds or later in his building? He you didn't know. build that. He he he, he uh he bought it. Okay. That was a he had, man. Yeah. He built th three he started to build uh well he had his uh Allen Ten wheeler that he finished that Raleigh Wilburn started it. That's why he named it the R. E. Wilburn. So he finished that one and bought a second 10 wheeler. He, I think he had it down to the frame and the running gear and he was going to finish that one and decided he wasn't going to do that, sold it and bought the switcher um, to, to move his 10 wheeler. But he, he actually started the American first. He, um, he started that. I, I probably guess 30 years ago. Mike McCarville's got to go. Uh, hey, Mike. He's going to Como for researching and depot for a kit. I wish I was going with you. That I went up there and, the, and they had it closed. I couldn't. We couldn't get into to where the roundhouse stuff was. We were outside the fence. But Como is a pretty cool place, even though yeah, there's not a lot out there. The town itself is tiny, and and the the area that it's in is very high, flat, fairly flat area. Uh, but it's beautiful there. Yeah, that's the old DSP and P, I believe, mm -hmm. among yep. other railroads. <laughs> he says, what's it like having hot steam boiler between your legs? <laughs> you know, I got an answer for that, but I'm not going to say it here. It's <laughs> hot. On that part. It's hot. <laughs> yeah. But no, yeah, Chris, Chris answered the boiler question. The hydro's is no more than 125% to 150% working pressure and 200% on new boilers. So mine runs at, my safety's popping 105 and 110. So whatever, 125% of that, you know, so run mine up to 150 PSI to look to do a hydro. And as long as, as, long as you don't have any leaks, then you're good. But what happens? Really, what what happens with the boilers is running them low on water, because then then you're going to melt your crown sheet and ruin your boiler, and you're done forever, because that's the most expensive part, is the boiler. That's why you you got to take care of it. It's kind of like your teeth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Once what a they're wonderful gone, analogy. <laughs> Some do better than others, right? <laughs> That's the best uh, place to take care of it, clean it. Uh, should they be checked and cleaned reg monthly? No, we. Uh, you always put boiler treatment in it. You never, you know, never run them without that because that's that's going to keep your boiler maintained. But you you can walk. You do wash it out if, over years. You know. You, the, do do you also make sure you only put in distilled water or I mean, I boiler. guess you could, but but it's Does the never, boiler treatment make up for that? I think it makes up for that. That it grabs all the sediment stuff, and then it all settles out and down to the to the mud ring on the on the boiler. And there, and you've got you know clean out ports that you can 
flush all that stuff out. But if you if you're using the boiler treatment properly, um, it's usually pretty good because um, you don't have access to distilled water. Um, yeah. Especially you unless you bring it yourself. And he's wants to know our steam boil. I think he's. I think he's not written this right. But our steam boiler is safer than oil or coal. <laughs> they all. They all are oil or coal. They. Yeah. Have. <laughs> well, the boilers all. They're all the same. I mean, the same. It just depends on what you make your fire with. Yeah. I mean, I mean, some you can run. You can run it on 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 wood. Some run it on yeah. diesel. You know, oil. It's um, kind of like saying, is it better to heat your hot water for your tea with gas or electric? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what he's asking, I think. Chris well, they can't run any solid water. Is, know that. Yeah. It has to be. It has to be gasoline or propane or. Yeah, like you guys can't use coal or nothing. Yeah. Or wood. Or, or wood. Anything that's gone to cause sparks and things like that. that yeah. Well, that, well, Chris answered that. You know, no distilled water that's hard on the steel boilers. Okay. I, I'm I'm curious about that. I wonder I wonder why, because that seems counterintuitive to me. But I don't know anything about it. So. Yeah, actually, that's a good question. Water. Yeah, like maybe this. maybe the the distilled water they're talking about is uh, distilled for a different purpose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Ted Heath, I think what you saw is like they can't use anything that's going to cause sparks. Yeah. No, cinders. Yeah, well, and, and train mountain like wood would bit. cause cinders. Coal would cause yeah. cinders. Yeah, yeah, you train mountain. It's propane or, or nothing. You know, yeah. no, no solid fuels because of the fire. And right. that rule right there pisses a lot of people off, at, like at the triennial, because they want to come run, but they're not going to convert their stuff to, to propane. Oh, well, so too bad. You can't come. Mm. Like and the risk of fire is huge. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. well, especially <laughs> since a third of Train Mountain burned up. So, yeah. Yeah, it's huge. Um, so. You know, and you can't get you can't get coal on the West Coast anyway. Um, and propane is easy to do. I mean, it's like running your barbecue. It's uh, Shannon says he saw the Denver and Rio Grande Western, well, the uh, Cumberson Toltec and the Denver and or the uh, Durango and Silverton converted their narrow gauge from coal to oil recently. Yeah, yeah. he thinks I because think of four, four stars. Yeah, yeah that's Shannon, totally that's right. that's partly right and probably the main reason. But I am a member of the uh, Friends of the Cumbersome and Toltec, and I, so I get their, their monthly uh, newsletter or magazine. Um, and a lot of that, a lot of the reason they're changing over now is because coal is becoming too expensive to get there and use. They're still getting the coal, as far as I know, from the same mines that the uh, Denver Rio Grande Western was getting it for back in the day. And the Denver, not Denver South Park, but the Colorado Southern. They were getting it from the coal mines just west of Durango. Um, and as far as I know, that's where they still get it. But they have to truck it in because there's no rail up there anymore. So they have to truck it in and it's just it's getting too expensive to use um, uh, because of the the way they have to get it there and the, the limited amount of funds they have to, to use to, to do that. So that's the other big part of that. Uh, but the biggest part of it is you know, just yeah. calm down all the the tree huggers, you know, that don't want the coal. Um, so they're train, changing over to oil, which it's still a steam engine, so it's going to be pretty cool. You just don't get the coal burning smell, but yeah. um, it'll be a well, little cleaner on your eyes than the coal was, for sure. Well, and it's dirty in the, in the small steam hobby. It, I mean, a lot of guys, that, that that's part of their fun is firing with coal because it's a whole different be a yeah. bigger challenge for sure. Yeah, yeah. because you got it. You are you're planning ahead. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I can't even. I yeah. can't even imagine being behind an uh, inch and a half scale locomotive or two and a half inch scale locomotive burning coal. Yeah, sitting there and, and the you know behind the the cab of the thing, catching that coal smoke in your face. You're going to be completely covered in cinders by the time you get done. And and you're always attending the fire. I mean, you're yeah. always working the fire. 
And yeah. propane, it's it's on and off. If you want steam, you crank it up. If you want less steam, you turn it down. I mean, it's it's really you can, you can equate it to cooking your hamburgers with charcoal or propane. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which, yeah. which is easier? What's easier? Right. Yeah, but I know the last time I rode, we rode in the gondola, open gondola, so we were outside, mm -hmm. but we were eight cars behind the locomotive, and my beard at that time still had was full of cinders when I got done that day. Yeah, um, and you have to wear glasses, or or they they tell you to bring some safety glasses is the best thing because it's going to be outside in the eye and i had glasses on yeah yeah i yeah. did too well, and, and, uh, cold, but you will get cinders in your eyes if you don't well and the maintenance with these things too with coal i mean with propane you turn it off put it away it's mm -hmm. a clean coal, if a coal right. fired locomotive like mine you gotta you gotta you know punch the flues and clean those you pull the smoke box clean that so it it's messy and there's a lot more to it plus all that that soot and cinders get down in the valve gear and the and yeah. the bearings and mess. start working yeah. with that so i guess some people like that mess yeah yeah well it's it's the experience of it and and yeah. you know if you get a chance this year i would say you'd have to go this year maybe next year they might still have one or two of them and get out there to to uh uh, Chama, New Mexico, or Antonito, Colorado, and ride the covers of Toltec behind a, a coal-fired engine because it's it's very unique. The, uh, well, the smell ready for the cinders because you will get cinders on you. Yep. <laughs> Even the inside the car, you can get cinders. Really cool, and it, to well, me, that's part of the mystique of it. Well, one also, of these days, what it with, smells like with the American, I, I would like to. Uh, Convert it maybe one season. Pull the the propane burner out of it. Push put the ash pan back in, and burn. Run it on wood over in Medford just just to do it. Just um, to see what it's like. Yeah. Just see what yeah. it's like. Because that's what John intended to do was to burn burn wood in that. He never intended to have it propane fired. Yeah. <laughs> And Bernard says that's the lure of the ride to coal, especially when you pull a grade. Yeah, coal, even the oil trains, it's the steam on a grade that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, that's when you can tell it's a steam engine. And, and steam engine, that's the allure to me, is they're just a breathing, mm -hmm. a breathing oh, man. I mean, they come alive when they get fired up, but it's. Well, and that, that's one of the fun things about it is watching the thing come alive because yeah. it's, it's a cold piece of metal. And once once you got the fire in and it's heating up, things start to go, you know, and pretty soon it's alive and running. Yeah. And that's that's kind of fun to do. I would like to do it in the wintertime when it's cold, because that's when steam's really fun, because <laughs> that's where you find your steam leaks, too. Well, you know, and it's funny because the guy that owns the uh, Eureka, Eureka and Palisade, is that the one? It's the Little American. I think it's <laughs> The ten wheeler might be a ten wheeler that they bring to Durango for the train festival. There, the guy owns it in Las Vegas, but it runs on wood. They fire it with wood. Well, Chris actually, he that's okay. He said, uh, "Wouldn't my little firebox? I'd probably be sitting a lot," and I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah, because it's not very big. The firebox really isn't very big. Yeah, I can't imagine, on, especially on your American, trying to fire that with anything but propane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I probably wouldn't get enough heat to really boil. Well, a firebox door not that big. It's not very big. You'd be putting toothpicks in there trying to keep the fire going. Yeah, I mean, it only holds about a gallon and a half of water. It really, it's really not very big. <laughs> yeah, you might not go too far. No. Uh, well, we wasted another hour, guys. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Great time as usual. Yeah, and we have, we got forty in here right now. We got about forty three or forty four. We, we have we hit forty four. Forty four yeah. are high. That's that's pretty close to our record. Yeah. It's getting close. What question? Can't thank you guys enough for for thank being you. here every week. <clears throat> and uh, thanks hope everybody. you have a good rest of your weekend and uh, next week. And we'll see you here next week. And Dennis and Jerry and Steve.
Good to see you guys. Thanks for being here. And uh, we will see everybody next week for sure. See ya.